What is UHF testing? UHF means ultra high frequency. And we know that partial discharges create an electromagnetic signal, and this is a broad frequency range. When we are measuring electrically with our transformer, so let's imagine this is a big transformer with only three bushings, and there should be more, um, and we are measuring example given on one of our bushings, we are doing an electrical measurement and we are taking the electric signal. This being said, we are only getting a certain frequency range of the signal. And we have a small problem. Whenever we are measuring, it's always hard to figure out where is the partial discharge actually coming from. It could come from the bushing, or from one of them, or it could come from outside. The problem is, we are not in a shielded room. There are ways to have an idea, do I have a partial discharge very, very close to my sensor? So is it in the bushing or very close to the bushing? Or is it very deep inside the transformer? But this is, uh, this is a topic for another video. So right now, let's say we are measuring electrically over here and we're having a lot of noise. And maybe we even have a little bit of surface discharge on our bushing, this would be bad. We could clean them, very often we would try to. We could have a little bit of corona discharges as well. And now we believe that the transformer has a problem. Why do we think that the transformer has a problem? Well, most of the transformers, they have something which is called a drain valve. And obviously I was obviously totally exaggerating the size. But a drain valve is, there's a pipe coming out of the transformer. It usually has a valve here. So, and if you open the valve, the oil comes out. If you close the valve, obviously the oil stays in. Very often, big transformers have not only one, but sometimes even two. And one of them is for DGA analysis, the soft gas analysis. This is, by the way, a method to actually look at the, uh, at the chemical reaction that was caused by partial discharges. So, with DGA, you are taking a piece of your oil, sending it to a laboratory, and ask the people to figure out what gases are dissolved in my oil. And based on what you're finding, there is something which is called a Duval triangle. You can try to figure out what caused the destruction of the oil. And there is an area where you would say, okay, if I'm getting these and these kinds of gases, it's most likely partial discharges. And if you are at that point, then it would be really interesting to figure out, do I have something, yes or no? This being said, I have, have a lot of noise and I do not really know where it's coming from. Now I can take the transformer, put it into a shielded room and do the measurement. Or I'm using the idea that the transformer itself is actually a shielded room. It is not 100% perfect, but it's, it's a try, right? So if you have this drain valve and this drain valve allows you to reach into the transformer, there are a couple of um, producers who have something like that. At least there's one company I know of and they have a device that they, they can screw on here with some screws right here, right at the flange, right where the drain valve is. And then they can stick an ultra UHF probe, ultra high frequency probe inside the transformer. So now the idea is, let's say, we have one of our windings here. Obviously, we have another one here, and I don't want to be over dramatic. I don't care exactly how much uh, how they look like. So now let's imagine I have a partial discharge on one of my windings. Let's say here, this partial discharge will, as an electric signal, walk up here. Obviously, I forgot the connection. There's a connection to the bushing. That's really important. It comes here, and by the time it already arrived at my sensor, I already lost some of the charge and I lost a lot of the frequency content. Just this being said, I mean, it has to travel through the winding, right? Another possibility, there could be technically a capacitive coupling to here, but the signal is already altered. And once again, once it is here, I have to figure out, is it from inside or from outside the transformer? However, if I have a partial discharge here, this partial discharge we create an electromagnetic wave and this sensor can, at least we hope, catch this signal and be able to figure out, whoa, wait a second, there is a certain signal. Very often, if you're lucky, you can correlate it with the electric signal as well. And then you are measuring more or less inside the shielded room, the transformer, you're able to measure partial discharges 
with UHF. There are a lot of things to it. You have to figure out what frequency you're working in. It is very hard to calibrate or to say you can't even calibrate. Why? Well, the magnitude you're getting here depends greatly on the distance. And obviously we do not, do not know the distance. Even if we would be able to estimate the distance in order to calibrate, we would need to get a calibrator here and get a signal out. Obviously we can't do that so easily. But this is not the most important thing. So UHF measurement or UHF detection, however you want to call it, allows you to get inside a high voltage device and be able to get the ultra high frequency content of a partial discharge. And this helps you to make an evaluation about the state of our high voltage device. When speaking about UHF, there's also something coming in mind that's called GIS. A GIS is a gas insulated switch gear. GIS are usually big tubes. They have this or even this diameter and they have very often three phases inside or one phase. Let's imagine there's only one phase inside right now. And let's say here is my switch. It is, I know this is a, a lot of oversimplifications and sometimes you have different areas. So you have connections, you can have uh, cables to GIS and terminations and things like that. If you want to measure inside the GIS, you have the possibility to use, use UHF sensing as well. So ultra high frequency testing. What you can do is, I mean, you have two approaches if you want to use UHF. Either there are these small windows over here that allow you to look inside, but the most important thing is they, they have a small hole in the metal encasement and they have some kind of insulation material, something like a little bit like acryl glass. And you can place a sensor here and maybe you have another one here. You can place a sensor here and maybe here or maybe here, or the GIS is already equipped with UHF sensors. Meaning, if I'm getting there, I don't have to place something there. I'm just having a wire coming out here and I just have to disconnect the grounding cap and then I can connect it to my measuring instrument if this is able to measure UHF. There are quite a couple of companies who actually have UHF device between here, so you have a UHF and then you have your normal measuring instrument and this one is able to deal with the high frequencies and this one is your normal device and this one very often goes to your human interface, in this case probably your computer. So now you can use UHF sensors in order to measure partial discharges in here. Once again, it's a different kind of frequency set, it's ultra high frequency and this allows you to have an idea about the GIS and you're literally using the case that it's already a shielded room and it's kind of advantageous. There is a little bit of a downside. Once again, you can't really calibrate because once again, if you have a partial discharge inside here, the wave will travel inside here, right? And when it hits my UHF sensor or it travels on here, I would be able to sense it. It will travel in here as well. And calibration would only be possible once I know where it is and I know the distance between the source and my sensor. And then the next thing is, depending on the frequency band I'm measuring in, it changes because a certain frequency band, maybe I need, would need this kind of calibration factor. For this one, I would need a different one. So this is not so easy. One possibility what you always have is what people call a sensitivity check. So example given, I have another sensor here and maybe I have one sensor here. What I would do is I would do my setup and then I'm taking a, a UHF calibrator connected here and then I'm injecting a signal through my UHF calibrator through here into the UHF sensor and this one will hopefully be able to see here. It will hopefully travel to here, I can see it, and then at least I can say, well, I can't really calibrate, but I made proof of concept or make it, made a sensitivity check, meaning I do know if something happens, I'm most likely able to see it, because very, very clear, right? If I don't measure anything, either there is no partial discharge inside or my sensor isn't working. So as soon as, soon as I do that, maybe inject something here and I'm able to sense the signal, at least I know if something happens inside, very likely I'm able to measure that and to catch that. Once again, it's not a real calibration, but 
most of the time the people or the clients or the customers or the owners of the JS, they don't care so much because the most important thing is, do I have any problems, yes or no? What are the most common partial discharges in JS? The most common ones are, I mean, these, uh, these conductors which are in here, you know, very often there are three of them. They have some kind of a spacer who holds them into place, right? And uh, they hold them into place. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's round, it's a radial thing. And if these things are dirty, you can actually have surface discharges on here. And that's not good because these spacers sooner or later might be destroyed by partial discharges. And another one is, during installation, you're not allowed to have any foreign particles in there. And if you have a foreign particle, for example, a little piece of metal, then what you could get is, you could get a jumping particle in here. And this would, sooner or later, ruin your measurement. It could also ruin the gas inside. And you don't want that. There are multiple companies who built GIS systems, and at least one of them, they created something like a, a particle trap. So if the particle jumps around like crazy, maybe the particle at a certain point in time falls into the trap, and then it doesn't really get out because there's no electric field in there. So there is no reason for the electrical particle to be charged again and to jump around like crazy. So particle traps is okay. On the other hand, many people will tell you a jumping particle isn't the worst of your problems inside the GIS. So, to stop here, we have something which is called UHF, ultra high frequency measurement. And as far as I have been exposed to, it is usually done on GIS and or transformers. And there are other possibilities to use them. I do not know if they have already hit the market properly. So we leave it with that. Thank you very much for watching and hopefully see you soon. Bye bye.